Sonic and Goichi both recently tweeted that they'll be doing a stream together and this got me thinking about when they had first played each other and when they first called each other out. Here are the clips in question with Sonic and Goichi calling each other out. One thing, uh, Goichi, uh, Omae wa mu. Shinderu. <laughs> wow. I'll be having the footage of their sets running in the background, as well as using key moments from them so I can give examples of exactly what I'm talking about. Goichi and Sonic play at final round. Goichi wins the exhibition in a dominant manner and takes the tournament as well, even resetting the bracket against Sonic Fox, which we all know is never easy to do. Let me tell you what separated the two at the time and why Goichi was able to clutch on the first real encounter at this point of the game. I'd like to say that they're both around the same skill level, but the real difference between the two is the teams that they're playing. Sonic's team is just way too honest right now compared to Goichi's. The character matchup can make a world of difference if the two players are equally matched in terms of skill. Without question, when it's a new game, it's even more of an extreme case. At the time, it's better to work smarter than harder if you want to win. Which, well, Goichi did. With it being a new game and all, no one knows how the meta will shape out. So it's always best to just play easy characters that can get the job done fast and efficient. You can bet your sweet ass that Koichi made that decision. Just to remind everyone of how cheap his team was at the time, he could do DP plus assists on wake up. But Deer's assist wasn't reflectable after the initial block, nor could you super dash it at the time. Gohan had an untackable knockdown, so for one bar he would get level 3 mix. That's hella cheap. Cell's rolling crush crossed up at the time. I, you remember that? That was a huge nightmare. And that's not even the tip of the iceberg. On top of all that, Goichi's defense is maxed out. To this day, that man still has the best defense the game has seen. With the team Sonic is playing at the moment, the odds of 1 winning neutral and 2 opening up Goichi are extremely low with Goku Black and Hit. They're just way too honest. They don't have anything that made them a cheap character. Looking back, you'll see that yes, Hit and Goku Black end up putting in some work, but the real star of Sonic's team was 16. 16 was the only strong character Sonic was playing at the time. By this simple fact, odds were that Goichi was going to win just based off of the character select screen. Right here in the clip I'm showing you, it goes to show how good 16 was. The 17 frame untackable command grab, the auto combo into tick throw or 2M mix up, his 5H has complete armor for everything except supers. 16 had it all. You're watching just how powerful 16 was a character when the game had just came out. Even though Sonic has the best or second best character in the game during the set, there's only so much 16 can do when the rest of the team is holding Sonic back from keeping up with Goichi. You can say that this was a hard learned lesson from Sonic that they wouldn't forget anytime soon. They get close to making the comeback this game, but 16 can only do so much by himself. I want a sidebar real quick. Man, look at Goichi. He knows. He knows how scary of a situation that was. My man laughing, my man sweating. He hit the whoa Nelly. He's like, woo. All right, all right, back to the game. Thanks to that, Goichi is the winner, resetting the bracket 3-0, then taking it 3-2. Sonic did a fantabular job in adapting to Goichi's playstyle of the second set, but it just wasn't enough to win. So what does Sonic change for the next encounter? Let's go right into that. This is what I like to call the revenge arc. Immediately after the loss, Sonic went straight to the drawing board trying to find a better team. They ended up choosing Cell, who was the easiest top tier at the time, Kid Buu, another top tier, and Gotenks, who was also another top tier. But most people didn't really think so at the time. <laughs> Little did we know, right? Anyways, Kid Buu and Gotenks, while being strong on their own, also gave 50-50s at every situation. Due to their own toolkit, as well as their assist. You just did whatever with Cell into perfect attack and congratulations, you got an easy 50-50. From what I can tell, the main reason this team was chosen, and if I remember correctly, Sonic played this team specifically for Goichi to get the easy 50-50s to get past Goichi's incredible defense. It's honestly just a coin flip that you can do back to back. During this patch of the game's life, you also got your assist back after 1 frame gaps of offense instead of the 20 frames that we're dealing with now. As you can see right here, it just happened, right? It doesn't even look like there's a gap. You add that on top of so having some of the best block strings, you can imagine how easy it was to stagger your strings to get your assist back and run the 50-50 again. Not once, but twice. With the game in its current state, Defensive options were really bad right now. Guard cancel was not worth it. You weren't invincible on the way in. If there's an active button, you'd get a hit. So the risk and the reward were not worth it. 
Now that Sonic had chosen a team, all they really needed to do was study why they lost, adapt, and apply what they practiced with the new team. So that the next time they meet, it would be a completely different outcome, which, spoilers, it was. Let's talk about it. They play in winner's finals and grand finals at final round. Sonic takes winner finals 3-1, hitting Goichi with their new top tier as hell team. Goichi was not ready for the barrage of 50-50s, the nooch, team synergy, and everything else from Sonic's new team. There was sensory overload competing against this team as opposed to Sonic's old team, where you didn't have to worry about anything until 16 was on screen. Goichi was up against the ropes to the point where he even started risking guard cancels to try to avoid situations, or even sparking just to get out of them. Sonic being the player that they are, had an entire lineup of new setups to put Goichi where they wanted him. Goichi could no longer completely rely on what separated him from the rest, his defense. Even the best players can get shook when they're put in an uncomfortable situation. The great thing about Sonic's new team is that if any of the characters died, the team is alright. There's still team synergy there. You can double super, get mix-ups, play lame, all of that was still intact. You even see Sonic pull out a pocket full of miracles come back with solo gold tanks against Goichi's whole team, further proving that it doesn't matter what character is left, each one is individually capable of holding their own. It's like Cerberus, even if you cut one or two of the heads off, as long as there's one left, you can still die. With their old team, once 16 died, achieving a 3 vs 1 or even a 3v2 comeback was a tall mountain to climb, as Hidden Goku Black just had lackluster tools and no real way to open up a character, at least when you're fighting against Goichi, right? And even if they did get the hit, the reward you got off of it was nothing compared to what they're playing now. Meter build, Oki, damage, this team had everything, except for a true DP, but Sonic's team didn't even need that. The whole team is, you get hit, now you have to block 50-50 to death. Fast forward to grand finals, Goichi does end up resetting the bracket, but Sonic fires back, immediately hitting Goichi with a 3-0. You can see just how Sonic's newfound confidence is with this team. Ultimately, with Sonic making the switch to an actual meta team to basically face Goichi on equal terms, it's what helped them secure the W during Combo Breaker. Of course, Goichi adapted well, resetting in Grand Finals. So all in all, changing teams was the best thing Sonic could have done, not just for Goichi, but competitive purposes in general. Thus a great rivalry was born between these two players, as we've seen over the years, and here's to hoping that there will be more sets amongst the two. Thanks for hearing me out, I'll catch you on the next one.